Our guest on This is America and the World is Juan Gabriel Valdez. He's ambassador of the Republic of Chile to the United States, a member of the Global Leadership Foundation, and holds a political science doctorate from Princeton University. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for, for having me here. The reputation of Chile is uh, stable, democratic, successful, clean, but there's trouble at home. I'm sorry that I have to put that on the table, but there's all kinds of things happening with the government. Can you help, help me understand? I'm sorry. Of this. course, of course. I, I, of I'm course, sorry. it's a very good question. In fact, what we are going through now is um, the result of success. Huh. We managed during uh, the last 30 years to double or to triple the income of the country. Mm -hmm. We produced a new middle class. We took thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people from poverty yes. to a new situation. Mm -hmm. And these people in this new situation have demands. They have new hopes. They want more equality. Mm -hmm. They go to the streets, the students, to protest because they have to pay universities which they consider to be too expensive. They want <laughs> more and better health. Therefore, if we have a, sit uh, a country which is in a situation of uh, unrest in some sense, uh -huh. it's because people are demanding more and we have realized that in these conditions we have to tackle with some problems which indicate that um, inequality is excessive in uh -huh. our country. Uh -huh. We cannot continue with a situation of inequality as we have. Therefore, we have to deal with education, we have to deal with taxes yeah. in the first place in order to finance education. Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with labor rights and we have to deal also with um, a, the, health, the health system. Uh -huh. Therefore, we are doing that, but at the same time we understand that we have to keep the economy growing. Because mm -hmm. if we don't do this with the economy growing, uh -huh. we might get into trouble. Uh, so impressive, and you mentioned this, that uh, Chile in the last number of years, not, not that many, has cut the poverty rate in half. Yes. Although poverty still is something to be dealt with. Huh? It is something to be dealt with, but it is a problem which is, in a sense, we know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And we continue to take people out of poverty. The problem is, on the contrary, how do you uh, get this new middle class which is, in a sense, a middle class which has just left a situation of poverty yes. and is dealing for the first time mm -hmm. with problems like having personal credits oh, in yeah. banks, mm -hmm. with private education and paying for education, mm -hmm. with new health services, uh -huh. with the justice system. Uh -huh. And they look at this society and they say, look, this society is too unequal. Uh -huh. We have managed to get up to here. We want more. And therefore, you have to introduce changes, and changes always mean a situation of difficulty. Changes are not easy to introduce in a society like ours. The president and some of the people around her, uh, politicians, uh, she fired some people in the cabinet, five people. Uh, some politicians have been investigated. Some companies are being accused of uh, a tax fraud and bribery right. in elections. Uh, that's, 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 uh, that's... That's very unchilean, as some people say. Unchilean. It's not something that happens. Yes, that's that true. That is very country. true. But let me say that the question of the relationship between money and politics is a problem everywhere, even I, in this country. I have that right here. <laughs> I have that right here. And and if you look at all the problems we have and you look at the accusations against the political class, which are accusations that are right in a sense, uh -huh. um, you will not find one politician that has gotten money in order to get wealthier or to, have, to enrich himself. What they have done is to finance electoral processes. Yeah, they, wanted, they want money they to want run their to, campaigns that's right, that's and right. such and like that. And this is a universal problem, but we are dealing with it, which is important is that our institutions are working, the justice system is working. We have uh, people who are on trial for evading uh, taxes, eluding taxes as a result of this process. Frankly speaking, I think that as a result of this crisis that we have had 
around the discussion of the financement of politics, our democracy will uh, get out of this uh -huh. moment with uh, a stronger basis and stronger uh, support. The uh, president's name is uh, Michelle uh, Bachelet. Bachelet. And um, is she solid? Is she in crisis? She has been, she has been elected she for was a second elected time and with goes 60%. to 2018. She's yes. in office till 2018. Right. And it's her, she was re elected because yes. she was president before. Pre previously, yes. Is she uh, solid? Will she be forced out? Will she resign? No, 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 no. no. She, We don't force out presidents, and frankly, there is no reason to do that. Of course, the government has been hit. Yeah. First of all, economically, because we grew in a, in a in an important sense as a result of the expansion of the Chinese economy. We are a country that, and this is something we would like to change, which is extremely dependent on primary goods, particularly copper. Yes. And therefore, our growth was as a result of the Chinese push, ah. economic boom. Once the Chinese economy Becoming boom, a trading partner? Becoming, we are also a yes, trading partner. That, yes. we, most of our copper is, is, sold, is sold to China. Mm -hmm. A More third of, of the we world? We are the biggest producers in the world, in yes, fact. Yes. Therefore, uh, we, are, we were heavily dependent on the Chinese economy. And once the Chinese economy was hit by a sort of... Uh, Bubble slowing burst, yeah. of their uh, of their growth, of course it had an impact on our economy. Oh. We were growing at 5%, 4.5%. We are growing now at 2.5%, mm. which is not terrible, but it's not as good as we had before, and mm. we need to surpass that moment. Mm -hmm. The president and our, our government has been, of course, hit by that phenomenon, and then by this... By the, by this uh, events you were referring to, which is the accusations against a series of banks to be supporting parties in, a, in an illegal way. Mm -hmm. This uh, situation has produced, of course, a big debate in the country. Uh -huh. But my point is that we will get out of this situation with uh -huh. a stronger democracy. Well, when you look at the United States and the amount of money that they're talking about raising for the 2016 election, you got money, you got politics, you got you put them together. In our country, are we an accident waiting to happen? Uh, as a diplomat, it's not an easy uh, question to uh, answer. What I would say is that we are going to do the following things, and we have legal uh, instruments and laws presented to Congress. We are going to forbid the contribution of companies to politicians. We want persons to contribute to politicians for their elections, but public contributions. That means nobody will be able to give money without making it public. Mm. We want campaigns that are cheaper. We don't want these campaigns that are so expensive that the whole business becomes a business in itself. We want, therefore, to control money and politics. We don't believe that a democracy can last forever in a situation in which politicians are clearly dependent on who finances them. And they have uh, a dependency that can become extremely difficult for their own decision making in Congress and for their own work, which is making laws which are for the whole country and not for some. There are people who are watching our conversation right now who will nominate you for a position on our Supreme Court. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little break right now. Uh, we are talking with uh, Juan Gabriel Valdez, who is the ambassador from the Republic of Chile to the United States. We're thrilled to have him here. This is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Tourism Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. 
The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your uh, uh, honesty and integrity in responding to some of my questions. Uh, let's talk about the good news. You talk about, and we've mentioned, uh, rising up uh, some of the people, a larger middle class. Uh, the president has had some successes. Could you talk about those? Well, of course. Um, we cannot explain what we have done if we don't refer to the past. Mm -hmm. Chile has had almost 25 years of democracy now, but we went through a 17 period of dictatorship mm -hmm. under the military. Mm -hmm. And of course, most of the things that are happening now are a result of this phenomenon of transition to democracy, yes. which was a very difficult evolution. And one of the elements is the transformation of our political system, because the government, the military government left us with a big weight on our shoulders. Uh -huh. There was a legal system which was in terribly difficult to change and to modify. Mm -hmm. And we had to get a big majority in order to change this system. President Bachelet got 60% of the votes and she got an absolute majority in Congress. Therefore, we have been able to change, for instance, electoral laws, which were extremely in unjust and were and favored enormously the minority in order to create the impossibility of reforms. Ha, ha, ha. Uh -huh. We have been able to change that, and I believe this is the most important uh, success of the government because it gives the population the perception that the system is legitimate uh -huh. and our democracy works. People don't believe anymore that if they vote, they will vote for the maintenance of things as they were before. Mm -hmm. They believe that they can change things through vote. Uh -huh. And I believe this is an important success. The initiation of a, the, the, the realization of a tax reform, mm -hmm. which allowed us to um, be at the same level of, of the OECD countries of which we are part, because our taxes were too low. This is a recognition that most American investors in Chile will tell me in <laughs> private, probably not in public, but they realize, they recognize that taxes were so too low in mm -hmm. Chile. And if we want to finance educational reform, we needed more money. Therefore, I would say that the successes are to have approved by a big consensus this tax reform mm -hmm. and to be able to initiate an educational reform, which of course will produce all sorts of debates, but we hope will change the face of the country in terms of equality mm. in a, a lapse of 10 to 20 years. Uh, I want to talk about the unique geography and topography of the country. Yes. The north, uh, the desert in the north is the driest desert in the world. It's extremely dry. It doesn't rain very often. And in the extreme south, you find Norway, more or less. <laughs> then uh, you go through many different climates. And uh, all of these uh -huh. regions are extremely beautiful. Uh -huh. the, north, the desert in the north is fantastic. As you probably know, we are making of Chile the country of astronomy, because we have the biggest astronomical centers installed in the desert of Atacama in the north. Uh -huh. And most of the new discoveries that astronomy has made in the world have been conducted, or Chile has participated, through these observatories in these um, scientific uh, achievements. Uh -huh. Therefore, we are very proud of the fact that now we are uh, in the desert of Atacama is being built the biggest telescope in the world, Ooh. with cooperation from the US, the European Union, Japan, and Russia. Therefore, this is a world phenomenon which is extremely important to, to us. We go through a center of the country which has an important uh, agricultural production and is famous all over the world because of our wines. Uh -huh. Yes, 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 yes. And of course, in the south, we have the fisheries and the salmon, and uh, we have cold weather, rainy weather. And as I told you, if one gets into the extreme south, one gets into the Antarctica, the <laughs> ice world. <laughs> Tell me about uh, size of population. <clears throat> we are almost 17 million. <clears throat> and capital city? Santiago. Santiago. And what is the... <clears throat> Santiago excuse me. Is, 
yes. the uh, cultural heritage of the people and the ethnic makeup of the country? The country is, of course, our language is Spanish and we have an important heritage from Spain, but the population has discovered the importance of the Mapuche tradition mm. and the Mapuche origins of most, if not all, of the inhabitants of Chile. Uh, the Mapuches were concentrated in the southern part of the country and this continues to be a situation in which we need to make an enormous progress because mm -hmm. the Mapuche Indians have been, as in most places, persecuted. Uh, it has been a minority that it has been marginalized. And what we have been doing now is to reincorporate these sectors and discuss with them the way in which they participate as a people in our nation. And they have their own philosophy, don't they? They have their own philosophy, they have their own language, um, uh, they, have, uh, I, they have marvelous poetry, uh -huh. uh, and uh, they also have a series of jewelry, uh, uh, which is uh, very beautiful, and we would like to show it in Washington at some point. Ah, mm. a Smithsonian exhibit or something that sort of exhibit, along, yes. those along those lines. Uh, so if you bring them into the larger tent, uh, they will have an influence on the government, and I'm thinking at the same time of the Pope's recent visit. To, to just, just to... To reunite the, both topics, yeah. the Pope appointed yesterday the first Mapuche origin ah. bishop of Santiago. <laughs> ah, yes. say that again. I think I stepped on the, you. The, the, the Pope appointed a new bishop in Santiago, and it's, it will be the first bishop with indigenous origin, Whoa. Mapuche origin. Whoa. So that's, and we know the importance of the Catholic religion that's throughout right. that's South right. America. Throughout, huh? throughout South America and also in Chile, of course. And the Pope is speaking out very strongly on this uh, inequality business at the same time. His visit uh, to that part of the world is, uh, was uh, cr very, very vital, wasn't it, to the conversation? It was very important. It was very important, yes, as you say, for the conversation, in terms that he underlined the principles and the ideas of a community. Mm -hmm. In uh, societies that are divided by inequality, that are divided in some cases by ethnic reasons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he underlined the need for uh, uh, dialogue between the Latin American countries, which is also very important. I believe he's going to Chile and Argentina next year, mm -hmm. and therefore he has announced a visit, therefore it mm -hmm. will also be important to receive him again in Latin America. But of course, his discourse on matters like equality, matters like environment, mm -hmm. uh, earth warming, uh, the economy and the way to perceive the economy mm -hmm. as a means and not as an end in itself, yeah. is something that has deep roots in Latin America. Therefore, we recognize that sort of discourse. As in the end, the Pope is Argentinian. Therefore, we, we understand quite, quite well what he's saying. Uh -huh. And I think that we have an, an enormous identity what, we, what he's doing. I remember uh, when we were in uh, Panama a mm -hmm. few months ago, the vice president said that this idea of elites and poor people is rife uh, throughout Latin America. And so his message is equally important. And the points that you're making about creating a larger middle class is right on track, huh? That's right. And we believe that the important, in that sense, the transformation cannot be a transformation in which you are intend in two years or in 10 years to change a country completely. Mm -hmm. What we understand is that education is critical. Mm -hmm. The capacity of people to have an equal access yeah. to uh, opportunities. So it's very exciting what's going on now, huh? I believe that Latin America at present is going through a period which is remarkable and is extremely exciting. Of course, we would like to change some things, but uh, each country knows what to change. Less a focus since America was focused on the Middle East on being dependent on the United States, much more independent for all of the countries now, huh? <laughs> that brings yes. a smile to your face? Yes, because some people in... <laughs> In Latin America, have written a lot about that, and some academics have done a big uh, 
analysis of, of, of this moment in which the U.S. was in concerned with Iraq and was in the mm -hmm. war in Iraq. It is true that Latin America has, ha has had a revolution in two senses. Yeah. In sense of it is more independent. Yes. And at the same time, it is more diverse. Ah. Our countries are not, does, don't look exactly the same as they looked 20 years ago. Uh -huh. You, I believe, you saw more similarities between countries like Venezuela, Chile, and Bolivia 20 years ago than you see today. What's the difference? The difference is that these countries have discovered that they can choose the way in which they will relate themselves to the world, and at the same time, they will change their own face. Uh -huh. They will make progress, or they will develop. Of course, there is a certain competition among us, because some people believe that the best, best way to develop is to integrate itself into the world economy. Some others believe that protectionism will protect them more, mm -hmm. etc. But I believe that we are more diverse, and therefore the exercise of having a community of Latin American countries has become more difficult than before. Mm. We have, of course, the, always we have had the, what we call the Bolivarian dream, uh -huh. which is that Latin American countries have a common destiny, whatever it means. <laughs> but the fact is that what we want is to have more development, more equality, and more democracy. And uh -huh. I believe this is a general aspiration of Latin America. Uh, relationship between uh, Chile and the United States? Well, they are excellent. Uh, I, will, I will tell you something that I have said uh, to friends here in Washington, and I believe it is true. Um, Chile is not a country that is a, a, a close neighbor to the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our economy is linked in trade terms to China and to other countries. Mm -hmm. Our relationship with the U.S. is by our own free election, is our own free will. Mm -hmm. It's not because we depend very much. Therefore, when we have a relationship, you have a relationship between a small country like ours mm -hmm. that chooses to be in a good, uh, in, good in, in a situation of good relations, but I mean more than that, to integrate in a sense mm -hmm. with a country like the United States by its own free will it's uh -huh. much more positive. Uh -huh, uh -huh, That's uh -huh. what I mean. Not out of necessity. Not, not out of necessity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a free trade agreement that we signed 10 years ago yep. and has been extremely successful. Mm -hmm. We are sharing with the United States um, the same vision of the Pacific. Yeah. We have a, a, a very important relationship with the uh, Asian countries and uh -huh. with some other Pacific countries like Australia and New Zealand. We have, const we have constituted with Peru, Colombia, and Mexico the Association of the Pacific, the Alliance of the Pacific Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that all these countries have free trade agreements with the U.S. Mm -hmm. We work th with the U.S. in matters of security in the Pacific. Sure, sure, sure. And we also work with the U.S. in matters of conservation, in matters of uh, preservation of species. In the Pacific, we are discussing now, precisely this year in September, we will have the big sea conference in Chile to which Mr. Kerry, the Secretary of State, will attend, we hope. And uh, in this conference, we will discuss the, the organization and the creation of protected areas around some islands, like Easter Island, yes, and yes, other yes, islands, yes, in yes, which yes. we want to protect species from industrial fisheries. Therefore, we have many areas in which we share vision with the United States, and I, I cannot describe our relationship today without saying that they are excellent. We are 15, 30 seconds away from the end of our conversation. Uh, I liked your candor very much. Uh, thank you so much for visiting with us. What do you see as your mission as ambassador? My mission as ambassador is to, I believe, of course, you have many missions when you are an ambassador, but one of the main ones is to relate my country to states of the United States. We have a Chile-California Council, we have a Chile-Massachusetts Council, and I'm traveling with 30 people coming from one region in Chile to work with Washington State, an agreement in order to uh, generate links and networks that can relate our two countries not at a diplomatic level, but at a real economic, ah. cultural, technological level. And I believe this is what 
it means modern, what modern diplomacy means. You will end up, if you continue on this mission, visiting more states than most Americans. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank you so much A for pleasure. the conversation and the education. A great pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much. For information about This is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Tourism Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.